All right. Welcome, everyone, to episode four, Champagne Cocktails of the Cocktails at Home series. Thank you all for being a part of this. It, it really, the response was, was uh, quite exciting for us. Um, and it seems like uh, there's a lot of people who are just ex as excited as I am to do this class. So uh, before we get started, does anyone have any questions right off the top? We all good to go. Everyone has, has their kits. All right. Um, the next thing I do want to talk about today uh, is opening a champagne bottle. We're going to get into that in a minute. We're also going to kind of go through our, our mise in a minute. Um, but what I would like to do, uh, first, we also are going to do a, a new thing with the camera. I'm going to switch cameras instead of having two different lenses. I'm going to share a screen for our demo camera once we get into that. Uh, for the first part, though, let's just introduce our Mies for the first uh, cocktail. We'll do the Bellini first uh, and get started to get a drink in your hands. You do have enough ingredients here to make two Bellinis. Please be careful, though, on the sparkling wine. Everybody's flutes are a different size. So if you fill up your flute and your flute's six or seven ounces, uh, you're not going to have enough sparkling wine left for the last cocktail. So just be wary of that if you decide to make both of the Bellinis to start. Uh, everything else, though, is measured out. You should have enough sparkling wine uh, if we pour properly to get through all the cocktails and do both the Bellinis. Just be careful on the volume and your size of your flute. Okay. Uh, we're going to grab our... Sparkling wine out of the fridge. And then later tonight, at the end of this class, we're going to do a demo on sabering champagne bottles, which is always fun. So uh, what I'd like to do first is we're going to share our screen here. Let's see if this is working here. It worked when we tried it out, so I'm hopeful it works right now, because that would be just fitting if it didn't. There we go. So we have our demo screen here. When we, when now we get into everything, we should still have a thumbnail of the um, original screen where you can see my face on the top left or right corner, not sure which one. Uh, but let's get started with our means for our first cocktail. Uh, we have two different Bellini options. Uh, the first one is a blood orange and ginger, where you have blood orange juice and ginger liqueur. Uh, the second we'll be doing is pear and elderflower. Uh, Bellinis are incredibly um, easy to make a bunch of different combinations from. You could just do orange, and that's really my most at that point, but you can do orange and Aperol. You can do um, raspberry and ginger. You can mix any type of fruit with a different type of uh, liquor or just stick with that plain uh, But let's get started here with the first one. We'll do the blood orange and ginger. Now, if your ingredients are cold, you don't need to chill this. You should already have cold champagne. So this isn't necessity to chill it. If you do have warm ingredients or room temperature ingredients, you can uh, chill your ingredients for the uh, Bellini down. What we're gonna do here to start is just a half ounce of each of these ingredients in the bottom of our flute. So our ginger liqueur and the blood orange juice. Now, both of these ingredients are on the thinner side. If you were using, say, uh, like a puree of strawberries uh, or something like that, you might want to mix this um, just with a spoon just to get everything incorporated uh, straight away. We don't have to worry about that with these two ingredients, but you could with other Bellinis. 
I'm going to set this aside and we are now going to open our bottle of champagne. I'm going to kind of show you the easiest way to do it. Um, there are more difficult ways, more challenging ways where you'd hold it in your hand the entire time, but I want to make it so that if it's your first time, you are comfortable doing it. So first step is just take off You froze. After that, you go ahead. You froze there for about four seconds. So you have your foil off, and then we're going to loosen the cage here. Now, it is possible that your cork could pop once the cage is removed. There is pressure. A good safety feature just to keep your thumb off of the cork uh, like this here once you're with the cage just so nothing happens after this point we're going to start removing the bottle from the cork is the way that i like to to show you uh versus twisting the cork now if you are uncomfortable or you're nervous about this one other sort of way to um To do it is to hold a towel or a napkin over top of it and do this so that if you do pop the cork prematurely, it's not going to fly across the room and hit somebody in the face. I'm not going to use this because I want make, to make sure that everyone can see everything. But if you do feel nervous, don't hesitate to put a napkin or a cloth over top while we're removing this uh, to better protect uh, the, you know, the pictures on the wall in your house. So. Uh, like I said before, I like to hold the cork firmly the entire time and twist the bottle loose from there. Once you start twisting, that cork's gonna wanna go and you're gonna almost be holding the cork into the bottle. And just gradually twist it. And if you do this right, you shouldn't be making much noise at all, just a little bit of a, of a sound when the pressure release is there. If it flies across the room, not a big deal. You do always want to have a bottle or Hopefully everyone did well with theirs. Any questions, any issues? Hopefully everyone's good. So when we're pouring champagne uh, or any sparkling into a flute here, you want to pour at a steady stream. Um, otherwise, it's going to bubble and fly over the top. But it's just a slow, steady stream. And there is our first uh, Bellini. Could take your citrus, your uh, lemon that you have there, pull off a nice peel, express over the top, and have that garnish sit on the side there. Cheers. anyone like to try the second Bellini as well. Now this one we're gonna do a little different. The pear is a touch thicker. So we'll make sure and we'll use this as our example if you want to um, use this in the future for a thicker fruit puree or something like that. So same method we did before, half ounce of pear. And then a half ounce of elderflower liqueur. This is uh, Saint Germain. We're going to mix those together briefly. Now, if you are using a fruit puree that has a bit more sugar to it, your mixture has a tendency to bubble as well. You also want to make sure that's incorporated. So one 
other way to do this with thicker purees or thicker fruit mixtures is to add just a little bit of your sparkling wine. And you don't really want a little bit to make sure that a thicker puree is mixed in here. And you're not gonna have your fruit sitting at the bottom of the glass and drinking just uh, sparkling wine at the top. Flower uh, Bellini. All right. Let me catch up on the chat here. Tablespoon for a jigger. One tablespoon is a, is a little bit more than a half of an ounce. All right. How's everybody doing so far? Any issues? Anything we need to catch up on? Okay. Let's take a second, slide across our prep from this drink. Nothing is going to be reused uh, later. Okay. Say here. Just make sure no one's waiting in the waiting room. All right. So not too much to clean up here from this drink. We'll move on to our French 75. So the French 75 actually started out, uh, the first iteration of it had cognac uh, in it. It has since been used, been made more commonly um, and more modern, modernly, that word, with gin uh, as a more crowd-friendly approach to it. Um, a traditional French 75 also uses simple syrup where we're using uh, honey simple syrup in place of that. I really just like the way the honey and the lemon and the gin goes together. It's one of my uh, favorite combinations. So I switch our base, 70, base French 75 to a honey French 75 on that. So for this one, our kit, again, is going to be, our equipment is going to be a jigger. We're going to need our strainer and a shaker set for this. And we'll be using a flute uh, as well uh, for this cocktail. Okay. Here, just one person coming in there. All right. Let's see, we'll go back to our demo screen. How do you make honey simple syrup? Honey simple syrup is one to one water to honey. Um, I really just like to use warm water, just warm enough to get the honey and water to mix together. I don't like heating honey over the stove. Um, I find it sort of changes the flavor a bit. So I try and keep the water at the lowest temperature to mix. So it's really like we're talking maybe 150, 160 degrees. Uh, that warm is, should be warm enough to mix in the honey and water together um, and create a, an emulsion. Okay. 
Okay. Back on our demo screen here, we have our equipment for the French 75. We have our jigger, shaker set, strainer, and our mesh strainer. We'll be serving it in a uh, flute. And we'll have our peeler for a uh, citrus garnish. Our ingredients, uh, we have gin, honey simple syrup, and lemon juice, in addition to our sparkling wine. Now, just be cautious on the labels of more descriptive this time. So you will see notations about how much is in the, the bottle to begin with, and then how much you need for each of the cocktails. Uh, so just be wary of that. We're using honey and lemon in this drink and in the last drink. So you're not gonna use it, either of them up uh, in this cocktail. Now for the gin in this, I like, uh, you have a couple of different options. This is Beef Eater, uh, which is a more traditional London style gin, so heavy juniper. Uh, but you could very easily go with a more American style uh, gin and get some really interesting flavors as well. Uh, a gin like uh, Blue Coat, uh, which is more citrus and floral forward, uh, would be very nice. Vermont, uh, where they, they are juniper. And I think both of those gins as an American style of gin would be fantastic here. So we'll start off with our lemon juice. It'll be a half an ounce. And when we build the cocktails, we always build with our, we build from our lowest, cheaper ingredients to the most expensive ones. That's why in case we make a mistake, we're not throwing out the expensive gins. So half ounce of lemon juice, half ounce of honey, and then an ounce of gin. Now, if you ever wonder, let me grab some ice here. Why you shake some drinks and uh, stir others. The typical rule of thumb is if there is fruit juice in there, you're going to be shaking it. So we have a lemon juice in this one. This calls for a shake. Um, if this was just, say, a, um, a Manhattan, where you have liquors and vermouth, you don't need to shake that. But with this here, we have lemon juice in here. We want to make sure that the emulsion is um, sturdy. We're going to shake that uh, cocktail. So there we go. Put through our, our strainer in here. And then I am against ice chips. So that's why I like to use a mesh strainer to strain out any ice chips that you would get from the, from the uh, shaking. This will also strain out any pulp or anything uh, left from the lemon juice. If you like it, by all means, keep it. If you don't have a mesh strainer. Also, not a big deal. Hopefully you will in a couple of weeks. So now we have our base in here. We're gonna take our sparkling. And the same thing, you wanna pour it gently over top. It will bubble, you're gonna give it a second. So we don't waste anything coming down the side of the glass. the bubbling subside a bit and finish topping it off. And our garnish here is a peel of citrus. We're gonna express that right over the top. So when I'm talking about expressing, you want to take the outward side of your uh, citrus and just pinch it 
right over the top. And what you'll do is you'll see the oils from the skin. Um, and it will just sit there on your nose uh, when you bring the glass up and just brighten that flavor. Cheers. Can you repeat the lemon peel, how you uh, express it? Sure. Because you froze. I froze, I'm sorry. Right. Are we having connection issues? Is it just when I do the share screen? I'm not sure. It seems yeah. to be. It's just here and there. It's just a, the odd blip. Yeah, I think it's just internet. Okay. So uh, when you're doing expressing a peel, you're gonna take your peel Try and get as wide as you can. Get a peel like this. Uh, oranges are typical, are the best for this process, but all of our drinks today were meant more for lemon. But you wanna take it and you have your outward side of the peel facing away from you over top of the glass, and you're just going to pinch it. And this works with uh, every citrus that you can. So you can do lime, you can do orange, grapefruit, um, all of those will work. Uh, some will have a little more oil than others, uh, but what it does is it sprays right over the top of the glass. Do one more here, try and show a side view here. I'm not sure if the expression is showing up on the camera, but my glass is certainly lemony. Sure does smell good. And that is your French 75. And that with cognac is delicious as well. If you like uh, cognac, it, it really is a, it's a different cocktail altogether. Uh, you get different notes uh, with the cognac, uh, but it is a delicious cocktail if you would like to try that as, as well. How is everyone doing with it? Ready, one cheers. I could drink this all day. <laughs> no, awesome. Looks like everybody's on the same page here. It's the folks I can see. So the first two cocktails rather straightforward. Um, the last one is going to be a little different. We're going to get back into the egg whites. Um, and I know I like to try and stretch this a little bit, but I wanted to show the way that you can mix um, sparkling wine into a cocktail where it would normally call for uh, something like club soda uh, or really anything with carbonation. Um, a lot of these drinks are interchangeable. You could do, uh, we were talking about gin and cognac for the French 75. Uh, you could do a variation, obviously, with vodka. Anytime you see gin on a recipe, you can just as easily do that cocktail with vodka. You may need some tweaks depending on the vodka you're using, and it may not be just as flavorful. I personally prefer gin there, but that's easily swap. You can easily swap in with, with, um, with vodka there. You could even do tequila on that. Uh, this next cocktail is going to have tequila in it, partially because I wanted to show that sometimes I think... Tequila gets, gets roped into just being like a margarita cocktail, but there's definitely some more that you can do with it. Um, we've done some cocktails uh, where you can use uh, maybe like a clear rum in that uh, scenario and it's still going to work. Uh, so you have a lot of interchangeable parts. The champagne fizz is the same way. Ah, the instructions say, so yeah, on the champagne fizz where it says 
gin in the instructions, it's tequila. I had originally writ, wrote the menu and wrote both with gin. And then I was like, let's mix it up a little bit. I didn't want to do two gin cocktails in a row. So underneath champagne fizz where it says in the shaker, add gin. Yeah, that should say add tequila. So we want to show uh, some variations that you can do uh, with tequila and sort of show the interchangeability of uh, gin and, te and tequila and other clear spirits. Uh, the, this cocktail is also going to have uh, an aperitif in it. Uh, this is Aperol, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, if you have not used this before, have not had it before, uh, this, it, it is sort of uh, floral, slightly fruity, a little bit bitter, um, but it balances really well when you use it with honey and citrus. Uh, that is, it is one of my favorite ingredients to use. So let's get together our set here. We're going to need for equipment, we'll need a, uh, let's see here, move back to the prep screen. Uh, it is a typo on the gin tequila. Any questions here before we move back into the prep screen for cocktail number three? Awesome. Okay, so our prep for cocktail number three, you, in the equipment you have the jigger again. Uh, we need our shaker, strainer, our mesh strainer, and then a serving glass. Um, I wrote down highball columns. I think it works best in glasses like this that are taller. You'll see a, um, a really nice change to the glass from uh, the frothy on top to where it's more red on the bottom. If you don't have a glass like this, you can use a, a smaller, a wider glass. That'd be perfectly fine. Uh, this is just my preference uh, for glassware on this type of cocktail. Okay, let's set aside our equipment for just a minute. And we'll talk about our ingredients. Uh, we have tequila. Blanco tequila here. I like Blanco tequila here. If you wanted to try a Reposado, you can. I think an Añejo uh, would be a waste in this cocktail though. Uh, but I prefer, like we talked about just a moment ago, we're using our honey again, lime juice, uh, lemon again from the last cocktail. And then we also have a couple of eggs. Now there are two versions here one with an egg and one without. I wanna make sure that everyone uh, is comfortable. If you don't like egg whites in your cocktail, there is still a variation. Uh, it's definitely, it's gonna be a little different um, and we'll make that uh, next, but I wanna first make the cocktail with the egg um, here first. So whenever we're doing egg white cocktails, that is the first thing we start out with. We wanna start out with the egg, egg white portion first that is the place where most often mistakes are gonna happen. Most often, uh, if something goes wrong, it will go wrong here And when we're cracking the egg. Maybe we get a piece of yolk in there, maybe we get some of the shell in there. We wanna make sure that if we make that mistake, we're not throwing out any tequila. Um, just keep this be your first, first step of the process. So I always crack on a flat surface, just been the way I was taught. If you crack on the side, uh, you know, not my preference. I think that that leads to more chip pieces of, of shell in your final product. Um, I prefer a flat surface. So straight down here, get two equal sides here, and you just go back and forth uh, with the yolk uh, gently over a straight side. If you have a jagged side, don't use that side for switching these back and forth. And that's all we're doing. You can, uh, some people like to use their fingers and just slide through the egg white there. This is my preferred way to do it. Uh, there are also tools out there. I don't think it's necessary, uh, but if you have one of those, you certainly can use those as well. Let me throw this out. You could also save the egg yolks and make, you know, some ice cream later. Okay, 
So we have our egg whites in the bottom of the glass here, and then we'll build from there. Lemon juice, just a quarter of an ounce. So this uh, cocktail will have a, a really strong resemblance to a sour where we're making, uh, we have our combination of citrus uh, that I prefer for any type of sour. Uh, it also has a bit of, a, of some, you know, you'll see things that look like a, a sour, you'll see things that look like, like maybe like a, a fizz cocktail. They're a little bit of loose terms, but it's hitting those marks where we have egg white, citrus, sweetener, and then a base spirit. Uh, for the sour, and then the fizz, where we're pouring, a, it doesn't necessarily have to be an egg white drink where you're pouring it over a carbonated beverage, but I prefer it with an egg white. So a, a fizz is where you have a glass where we're going to have a carbonated beverage in the bottom, we're going to pour over top of it. So we have our lemon juice in there, we have a quarter ounce, and we have a half ounce of lime juice. So as you see, we're matching the same amount of citrus as we have uh, to our sweetener. So in total, there's three quarters of an ounce of honey and three quarters of an ounce of citrus juice. If you're making variations on this, that is my common two ounces of alcohol, three quarters of an ounce of sweetener, three quarters of an ounce of citrus. That is interchangeable. If I wanted to do this with uh, maple syrup, I could sub in maple simple syrup in place of the honey. Uh, maybe we wanted to do uh, grapefruit juice in place of lemon. Uh, we can mix that, those sort of acids around uh, a little bit as well. Um, so these recipes are baseline recipes. You can go from there and sort of experiment with things that you're familiar with. Um, the ingredients you have to be careful switching out are the ones where the sweetness is adjusted. So um, let's take uh, the aperitif. We're doing a half ounce of Aperol. This uh, has, is more bitter than sweet. If you wanted to do a variation of this cocktail where it was maybe Saint Germain in this place, the sweetness of the Saint Germain would mean that you should pull back on the honey simple syrup a bit. Uh, for what we have here though, the aperitif is not so sweet, so the balance works out uh, really nicely. So half ounce of the Aperol. And then our last ingredient is tequila. We're gonna do an ounce and a half. Okay. We're gonna be doing a dry shake first. Egg white drinks, you always want to do a dry shake. That means we're gonna shake this cocktail without any ice. This will build up the froth inside of the drink, uh, inside of the glass. Uh, one other trick you can do, if you want to take off the strainer on, you can take off this wire ring. You can do that. I don't have the ability on this strainer here, but if you wanted to, you could take this off and put it in your glass. Uh, that will sort of work. Like if, you, if you've seen the um, uh, the shaker balls for, for, uh, for people to make like protein shakes where they have the wire whisk inside, uh, it's the same principle where you, that whisk inside is just helping to build up the air bubbles inside of the egg white and create more foam. So with dry shaking, it's a couple of shakes and then stop. You have to stop the pressures building up inside the, the shaker. If you shake it and you keep shaking without stopping to release the pressure. So tight seal here. 10, 12 shakes, stop, release the pressure. Hit, the, hit it down, get a good seal again, and then go back to it. Okay, let's take a look. You see, you definitely see some froth here, some foam building up, the, the volume has increased as well. I wanna do one more uh, good, uh, dry shake, and then we'll add some ice and get moving there. Now, there are a couple things you could do to cheat that step. If you have one of those sort of like immersion frothers, uh, I've seen them, we use them for a little while, they're like $15. Um, that is a good tool 
if you uh, do not like shaking egg white drinks, but you still really enjoy them, you can just drop the frother in there and it will triple the volume of what you have. So we've done our dry shake. We've built up our froth. We're gonna add ice to it and just do a quick shake to chill down our ingredients. We've added our ice. Okay, now this is where we pause. We have our drink, we're ready to pour it in our glass, but the, uh, the step here that we wanna make sure we, we do first is we're gonna put some sparkling wine at the bottom of our glass. One and a half ounces, two ounces if you, if you have it, that's fine. Uh, but I really like one and a half ounces here, uh, right in the bottom. And we're gonna take our Hawthorne strainer and our mesh strainer right over top. Anytime you're using an egg white or you're making an egg white drink, you wanna make sure you're using the mesh strainer just in case there's any pieces of egg white that are left over. And with this, you wanna pour it a little quickly. You don't wanna just sort of like tip this over. You wanna pour this faster so that the mixture in here is going to uh, mix with the sparkling wine at the bottom of your glass. And it will create a really nice color uh, with the Aperol. This is, the way this looks is one of my favorite drinks here. Okay. Now it's sort of lightly pink at the bottom. This will froth up nicely up the side. Now, a little one addition I like to do for this, and you don't have the, I didn't give out torches in the kit, but if you are inclined, sprinkle a little sugar right on the top of the foam. And then you hit that sugar with a torch. It will brulee and caramelize right on the top. And you'll get those really nice sort of like toasted sugar notes. Uh, like a um, you would get on top of a creme brulee, uh, and it just sort of sits right on top. And it's trying to let me see if I can get this camera angle here, so you can get that torch uh, notes right there. And that's really for mostly for aromatics. Showing off my cracked uh, cutting board there. A lot of the the little additions, the garnishes at the end, are for aromatic purposes. We want to get those last notes that you're going to get right when you bring that glass to your face. Uh, it's not necessary. It's, it's just a sort of added touch, but it's something I really like to do uh, for these type of cocktails. Cheers. So you kind of get that, that same floral note um, from the tequila, the Aperol in this pulls back the sweetness a bit. You get, it sort of just, um, it sort of mellows out the sweetness of the honey. You still get it there, but it's not as bright. Uh, it's more of a back note uh, because of the Aperol. I could drink this at breakfast really good awesome uh, let's see here so one of the things i'm noticing is that i don't get the chat notices when i'm sharing screen so let me catch up here brand of tequila uh we use hornitos um in our cocktails 
another one is Espolone that I really like uh, for cocktails. I don't think you need to, uh, and this is just me, my, my cocktail snobbiness, snobbishness talking again. I don't think you need to pay up for like a really expensive tequila in a cocktail. If I'm paying up for um, a higher end tequila, I want to sip it straight. Like, um, like this is one of my favorite tequilas uh, is Volcan uh, Añejo Cristalano. This is a delicious tequila. I don't want to make this into a margarita. I want to sip this straight, neat, or maybe with a with a cube or two of ice. Um, so for a cocktail, I like Hornitos. I like Espolón. For sipping, uh, it's something like a Volcan or Casamigos is a really nice uh, higher end tequila that is delicious for sipping. They have a couple of really nice ones. And then we could talk about Mezcal all night. Uh, some of you already know my love for Mezcal. Uh, ice in the shaker. So ice, you do dry shake first, shake it, get the froth, and then you add ice and then shake again just briefly just to chill it down. Want a torch? Yeah. I don't know if I can, I don't know if that's a good thing for me to be handing out torches. So uh, there's a question about the equipment. Some good news. The equipment is going to be able to be added as a, an additional item on the next class. Uh, I finalized everything uh, this past week. Um, we had some, we had a lot of different options with the different champagne sparkling options for this class. And I didn't want to sort of really confuse it by adding equipment as well. So the next class will have two different option, additional options that you can add on. One is going to be a food pairing with hummus and cheese. And the other is going to be the equipment add on. You're going to have six piece uh, set. You will have a uh, shaker set. You will have a Hawthorne strainer, just like this, a mesh strainer, a jigger and a a bar spoon and hold on. And lastly, uh, one of these mixing glasses as well. Uh, those are what I, I feel are the six like most important items uh, for, your, for your home bar. A torch would shortly follow. I know there's some torch lovers out there. Uh, I like setting things on fire. I can't help it. I'm a family, everyone else in my family is a fireman. I just turned out to just, you know, like to light things on fire. Let's see. Uh, someone says they have a problem. If you have a problem, let me know. I can try and work it for you, work with it for you. Ginger liqueur should be available at the local wine and spirits. Um, what you'll find is in most stores in PA, they have uh, Canton ginger. It's not my favorite. It's a little on the sweeter side. I don't like using Canton. Um, I prefer, we use Fruit Lab, which I don't see at any stores. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, there's an intense ginger out of New York that's really nice. It's on the spicier side. Um, something else you could do that is available in most stores, uh, Boardroom Spirits, uh, which is out of Lansdale. It's a local distillery. They have a ginger vodka. It's 100 proof. It's delicious. You would have to adjust your recipes a little bit. So if your recipe called for like a half ounce of ginger liqueur, you could use a quarter ounce of ginger vodka and a, and a quarter ounce of like agave simple syrup or a simple syrup just to adjust it down. So it's not hundred proof, it's, it'd be closer to like 50 proof. Um, that would be my recommendations for local, uh, for, for ginger liqueurs available in the state store. Next class is up. So we have two more things that we're going to do. We're gonna make the, the ginger liqueur I didn't like what is, is Canton. And I'm just a snob, I can't help it. Uh, it's just on the sweeter side. So when I'm using, when I'm thinking of ingredients to use, I want sweetness to be left out of it. It's really easy for me uh, when I'm creating cocktails to add sweetness back. I can use honey, I can use maple syrup, I can use uh, caramelized sugar. I can use a, a ton of different ways 
to add sweetness back in. So every secondary ingredient, whether it's be uh, ginger liqueur or um, if I'm using a vermouth or a, an Amaro, I want them to be have as little sugar as possible. I want as much flavor uh, that they can that they can give uh, as as they can. So I tend to shy away from the sweeter side of, of secondary cocktails or accent cocktails. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of Canton. Um, boardroom Spirits, yes, I'm glad. People love Boardroom. They are right down the street from me. We are going to be partnering with them uh, on our spring menu. We have some fun things we're working out with them. I'm really excited about our, our partnership coming up. The email, so for the next two classes, um, let's do this. Let's talk about the next two classes in a minute. We have two more things we're gonna do. We're going to saber a champagne bottle and we're gonna make the champagne fizz without egg whites. So let's do this. So if any of you are familiar with sabering a champagne bottle, if you're not, we'll do it together. Um, this is not something where everyone's required to do. This is why we're doing it afterwards. Um, after you've all opened up your bottles. What is important though, is to make sure that you have a completely cold bottle and we're going to, hold on. We're going to put the top of the bottle in an additional chill for just a couple of minutes. We want the neck of this bottle to be ice cold. So, we're gonna chill it, a already chilled bottle, upside down for a couple minutes while we are making our champagne fizz without egg whites. Be careful how much you're moving the bottle. It still uh, has pressure inside, so the more you move it, the more you're going to increase that pressure. I really, you know, try and just be as gentle as you can when moving it side to side so you don't increase that pressure. Give me a second, let me just clean off these shaker. Okay, so let me open back up the Am I doing the sabering indoors? No, what I'm going to do is do it out on my patio in just a second. How to store an open bottle of champagne. Okay, I'm gonna to get to all these questions, I promise. We're good. We have egg white drink without egg, or excuse me, fizz without egg. We have the next glasses, we have sabering and storing a champagne bottle. Let me move to our share screen so I can do the cocktail demo. And of course, it's taking a second to load. Give you just a second. Unable to connect. There we go. All right, so let's do our um, fizz cocktail without egg. So we're going to start off with uh, and the so when you're doing a, a sour, if you're adjusting a sour recipe or a fizz recipe to not have egg whites, you're going to pull back on the honey or the sweetener and the citrus. You don't need as much, but you keep the, the alcohol measures the same. So instead of three quarters of an ounce of sweetener and citrus, we're just gonna do a half ounce. So that half ounce for citrus is gonna be divided into a quarter ounce of lemon and a quarter ounce of lime. Half ounce of honey. Half ounce of Aperitif, Aperol, and then it's going to be an ounce and a half again of tequila. OK, 
Okay. Now we're going to add ice to this. We're going to also put ice in our glass that we'll be using. Same thing here. This is just going to be a quick shake. Just to chill everything down. Polyphone strainer right on top. Now we don't need the mess strainer because we're pouring it over ice. So ice chips aren't as big of a deal here. And that's going to leave us with a good bit of room to top with our sparkling wine. And that is our champagne fizz uh, without egg white. Cheers. Okay, so there were a few questions. Uh, let's see if I can make sure I touch on them all. So storing a bottle of So I am lucky in what I, in, in this field that I get a couple of these pieces here. Um, it's important to keep the bottles cold. So even if you don't have a way to store the bottle or to seal the top, it is incredibly important to always keep your carbonated beverage, whatever it is, whether you're talking about a, a, a two liter bottle of Coke or, um, you know, the can of soda. If you don't drink it right away and you leave it on the counter, it's gonna be flat. Uh, if you put that can right in the fridge, you're gonna extend the life a little bit. Um, carbonation holds in liquids between up to about 36, 38 degrees. Once you get over that, the carbonation starts to come out of it. So it won't stay there any, any longer. Um, so as much as cold as you can keep the beverages, the longer the life will be. So these champagne stoppers uh, would be my best suggestion for storing bottles um, and, and sort of most sort of effective way. Uh, there are, and this is where you just pop it in and seal with a, a top here. Uh, I know this is additional equipment that some of you folks may not have. Um, I would just put it in the fridge, keep it cold and try and drink it pretty quickly uh, if I do not have a cork like this. Um, that's sort of what you have to do. I'm gonna have to, drink the rest of this bottle that we're gonna savor in a minute tonight. It's just, you know, just the things that you have to do, you know, just stuck with it. Let's see. Let's see, store a bottle of champagne. So Susan, does that answer your question on storing it? You should be able to get these. Um, does a spoon in the bottle trick work? Spoon in the bottle. That I'm not familiar with. Rick. I have to, have to Google that one. Um, you oh, should I've be able heard to buy that if you put a silver spoon in a bottle, too. Yeah. I don't know. I've never tried it. I heard that. I before. haven't tried that either. I'm going to have to do some research to see if that actually works. Um, you can buy these, these type of stoppers at most stores. Um, if you let me know, I can see uh, we, if I can grab a couple of these, if anybody would like one, just send me an email. Uh, I can try and grab a couple of these extra um, caps for you. Um, and I can maybe include it on one of the, the next kits that, uh, that you get. I'll just include one of these toppers. Just send me an email on that. Let me, here, let me do this again. I will put my email in the chat. My email is there. Um, so if you have any, by the way, feel free to use my email uh, for anything, uh, whether it's 
questions about a cocktail, you want to make a variation, you're having a party and you want to do something, I'm happy to help with anything as, as best I can. Uh, there was a question about champagne fizz as a pitcher for brunch. Um, you can do it. Uh, that is not a problem to do. <laughs> what I worry about with, um, with making pitchers uh, with sparkling products is that they will lose their fizz over time. So yeah. if I was going to do a, if I went to do a cocktail like that for um, a party or for a brunch, I would probably make a pitcher of the other ingredients and have it just be like, here, we're going to top the top the drink off with some sparkling to order. That would be my preferred way of doing it. Um, I think that will give you a better, uh, a better life on the cocktail for the length of the party. You may be fine making a pitcher to start like for the first round of drinks, but after that, a pitcher sitting there with, um, with, with sparkling wine and it's going to start to taste flat, you know, 25, 30 minutes in. Uh, and that's where you, that's what you don't, that's what you want to avoid. Um, not drinking more champagne. Whoever who's quoting, quoting keys there. That's a great quote. One of them. A lot of great quotes about champagne out there. Uh, let's see if I've touched on everything. Okay. So a couple of things. We're going to savor the bottle here in a second. So the next classes on the 25th, of this month, we will be doing uh, what we're calling the martini class. Uh, so whoever was here at the last class, we had a couple of suggestions. We're including those, as many suggestions as we can in the next two classes. Uh, we're going to do the martini class with the next one. They should be, uh, our marketing team should be adding those uh, classes up and posting them, um, if not today, by tomorrow. So the martini class on the 25th, so that's a Thursday night, and we're going to do it at seven o'clock. So we had some requests to do a different night and to do it a little bit later. So we're gonna try that. Um, so pickup for that class is gonna be on Wednesday the 24th. Make sure, I'm just gonna make sure I'm quoting the days right here. So Wednesday the 24th, Thursday the 25th for class. Um, we're gonna do a Cosmo. So there's, there's sort of three different styles of martinis that I wanna go through here. Uh, the first one being sort of a, a Cosmo where uh, it's fruit forward, it's shaken, we have fruit juice in there. Uh, the second one being a stirred cocktail. We're going to do a Vesper, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, stirred cocktails. And then we're going to do a dessert martini with an espresso uh, martini as well. So those will be the three drinks for the martini class on the 25th. Uh, another note for the martini class is we, we talked about we're going to add food. So you're going to have the base price, $45, uh, just as it's been. Uh, work board meeting. So work board meeting, I feel like you should just invite everybody to the board meeting on the 25th and we just do this first. I think that's what that's what it should be. So um, it'll be a $15 uh, additional charge if you want to add food. Uh, and the food will be uh, hummus and then two courses of cheese. And uh, Chef uh, Mike from the White Dog in Glen Mills is going to jump come, come on with us with about 50 minutes left to go in the class. And he's going to talk about the cheeses that he picked uh, to pair with the two of the cocktails. Um, lastly, the equipment we talked about, we're finalizing the price uh, in the next day or so of what the equipment will be. Uh, it'll be comparable. So um, what I was looking at, you'll see equipment, you see cocktail kits online for about $75. They don't include mixing glasses. So we're adding a mixing glass to ours. Um, so the price will be a little bit higher than that but the mixing glass is really what's separating this kit from the other kits you'll see online. Um, but I'm trying to find the, finalize the price for that in the next day or so. Uh, lastly, the other class that we have finalized today is the whiskey class. This will be March 10th, uh, a week before St. Patrick's Day. This will be a Wednesday class. So Wednesday, we're doing seven o'clock again for that class. Um, so seven o'clock, Wednesday the 10th, we're gonna do pickup Tuesday the 9th. Now that class will be old fashioned Manhattan and penicillin. So I wanna make it um, as this, so to me, those are, those are two of the most <laughs> basic common cocktails uh, that I wanna go through. And I of course have my, um, my snobby things that I like to do. Any way to pay if you watch for the prior three classes. So the, the marketing team should be posting the classes that we finished on YouTube. I don't, I think I messed up the recording of class one or two. Um, 
So I don't, I, one of those is not, we didn't record. I, I, I completely forgot to hit record. So um, two of the classes should already be up on YouTube. This one should be up um, tomorrow is our goal for that. So uh, pricing stays the same for the next two classes. Food additions, uh, $15 to both of those classes uh, as well. And then the equipment, uh, a, a, another sort of add-on if you'd like, will be uh, available as well. Price will be finalized tomorrow. Everyone mm -hmm. has my email address. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate. I think we have touched on everything, uh, every questions that come up. So multiple kits, you can. The first, so the first order of kits is a dozen. So I'll have a dozen to start off with. After that, I'm, I'm certainly going to get more, uh, but the first order was for a dozen. So they will, um, it'll be sort of first come, first serve on the tickets uh, when the uh, equipment goes live. Need, need a kit really bad. So I have some people that have been, yeah. Let's see. I think that's all the questions. The only thing left is to savor the bottle. Is that correct? Anyone else have any questions before we uh, move this to a different part of my kitchen? Ooh. Here we go. I dare you to do it in the kitchen. What's that? <laughs> I said I dare you to do it in your kitchen. So I have enough space that I could. Like it's my kitchen is really like kitchen family room when it goes straight across. I may just do that. Nobody's home to get mad at me, so I'll be fine. You're gonna get stuff everywhere. No, all right, let's do it inside. We'll do it inside. It's really cold outside anyway. And I don't think you guys could see me. So we'll do, we'll saber our bottle here. All right, so let's see. Do you want me to stay on this camera or do you want me to move to the demo camera? Demo. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say I like that camera. You don't freeze. Stay on this camera. Stay yeah, on this stay. camera. This camera freezes less. Yeah. That's the other camera. All right, so the other one's freezing. All right, so let me I'll try and figure out why. So I finally figured out how to do two cameras and it's freezing on me. All right, so what I will do though is I'm gonna move this camera a little closer to me so that Hopefully you can see more of the detail of what we're doing here. Is this like a lightsaber move or? It's not that bad. I mean, that sounds a lot cooler than this actually will be. All right, so what we wanna do though, is we wanna take off the entire foil. So not just what's on the top here, we're gonna take off the entirety of it. Uh, I also need to grab. So whenever you do it, this type of thing, you want to make sure that you have a glass standing by. <laughs> okay. Now, traditionally, there are sabers that you can get for opening bottles. Um, I didn't really mess around with that. Can't I would see. just use a chef's knife. Now, it's really important. If you've got a saber, it's going to be about the width of a chef's knife on both sides. It's not sharp. It's just the back side of the chef's knife where you have this sort of like, let's call it, you know, a couple millimeters of thickness on the back side. You want that heft for popping the top off. This is the side I'm going to be using. I'm not using the sharp side. If I use the sharp side, I'm going to ruin my knife. There's a question coming in somewhere. You just want to see how cool this is. Okay, so same thing as before. Um, taking our our cage off and keeping our thumb on the bottle uh, on the oh, excuse me on the cork as soon as we do this. Now, every single champagne bottle that you have is going to have a seam where the bottle comes together. It should be two seams. You can take a look at the bottles you have just to see this. Oh yeah, okay. But there are two seams. We're gonna go straight up the seam. Okay. So as I do this, I'm gonna slide my my the back of my knife straight up the seam and I'm gonna hit this lip right here. Yep. Yep. And the entirety what? of this lip is gonna pop straight off. What lip? Can everyone mute just because every time someone talks, it, it flips off of him? I think I can do that. 
Let's see. Is there a way to mute everyone? You there shouldn't use the host. As the host, you shouldn't. Also, just pin him, and then it'll always be on him. How do you pin him? Top right, there's three dots. Like, if you go over my camera and you hit the three dots on the top right, uh, there's a button that says pin. All right, so it looks like everybody's muted now. All right, so uh, backside of a knife, straight up the seam into this lip. That's where we're going to stop, and this is going to ideally fly across the room and not break the windows in my house. You want to give it some some speed to it, but you're not trying to like, not really like doing anything. It's just it's good. The pressure inside should be enough to allow this to fly across the room. Everybody ready? Any yeah. questions before I pop this off? You got this. Stop. Good luck. Fuck me. Stop. Shut up. I can't see you. Oh, fuck. Nicely done. The speed that the oh, we got it. Somebody off. was talking and their face was on. Yeah, them. I missed it. We missed it. Yay! Nice a lot. Who the fucking person was? You guys, you guys need to pin the video and then it won't actually change when people are talking. But wait. So the speed that the cork is coming off of the top here is allowing nothing to get inside from the glass. There's no chips going in. Everything's going outward. Everything flies away and across onto the dining room table there. So there is our sabering thing. Um, the video of it should just be of me, I hope. And not anyone that, that spoke and threw in the camera. I'm sorry. I could open another bottle if anybody. I, but then, <laughs> yeah. oh, we'll wait. I have a nice bottle of Penswood sparkling wine in my fridge. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry we missed it. I was looking forward to that. All right. You're going to make me feel bad. I'll do it. No, you don't feel bad. People don't mute. Just send us the recording. Mute, it, mute yeah, muting matters, but just pin the camera and then that way it'll never Let's replace the yeah, bottle. That, the F bomb is flying. Pin the camera. It, for some reason, we can't pin it. Yeah. All right, so. want, I have it pinned, and even with it pinned, I couldn't see you. So if everyone goes on mute, we'll be good to go. All right. So I have one more bottle. Carly, you may recognize this. Sure do. Is this going to, is there enough in here to, is there enough pressure in here to, to? There is as long as it's nice and cold. I tried it when it was not cold and it did not work. So this has been in, in the top shelf of my fridge. This is freezing. Um, I'm really going to, I'm going to get, I'm kind of, like, I am not it, going to work tomorrow. It, it broke a little bit, but I did it. All right. Anybody is local to Lansdale and wants to come. That's fun. I have two labels or I have two, uh, I have two foils. Anybody wants to come drink some champagne with me? I have a lot open. That is the other thing about sabering. You can't really seal these bottles. Once they're open, you got to finish it. So, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, let me go through here and I mute everyone so this does not happen. It looks like, looks like everyone's muted. Okay. So for the next couple minutes, if there's any questions, uh, please use the chat. Um, and I will keep my eye on the chat as we go. Okay. So, um, Again, we did skip the step on this one of chilling down the neck additionally. So it may take a couple of swipes to pop off. And I know I'm just like pushing my luck with my windows in here. Uh, but either way, so same thing. There's seams on this bottle, just like any, any champagne bottle you have, you have seams on opposite sides. We're using the back end of our knife here. And we're just gonna slide it straight up that seam and pop this, pop it right here underneath the lip. I need to get myself a glass, excuse me. Okay, 
Everybody's good? All square. Okay, so it's gonna be straight up the top. Give it a little bit of force, but not too much that you're gonna try and chip this, um, the, the glass here, like I just did. Nope. So this one was not cold enough to do. I apologize. Thank you all. It was a pleasure to host this class again. Uh, this really is sort of been my, my highlight of, of the week when we get to do these. So uh, thank you all for doing this uh, and for coming back. Uh, the ones that, uh, that keep coming back to these classes, it really uh, has astounded me, the response that we've gotten so far. So um, blown away. Thank you.